You moron. How dare you disagree with me? Don't you know that I'm just speaking common sense? I mean, hey, if you don't agree with me, then you just don't understand common sense. Have you ever been in a situation like that? It seems to me at least that the term common sense is more confusing than people make it out to be. In fact, common sense is almost like a weapon. People will throw that term at you to try to win some rhetorical points. And in our world of increasing political tribalization, people shield themselves and their little communities and have a bunch of people just agreeing with each other. Dissent is silenced or ignored, meaning a person will probably get the idea that their radical ideas are just common sense, since what's common is what's allowed in the political cult. But what even is common sense? I mean really, is it the truth? Is it even knowledge? Well today we're continuing our pragmatism series with William James's fifth lecture on common sense. Welcome to Philosophy Tunes, I'm Paul, and this video is another foundational piece in our pragmatism series. I know they may not be the most eye-catching when you're on YouTube looking for something to watch, but with these pragmatism videos I'm hoping to form the foundation for the more entertaining videos on the channel. Plus, what other philosophy YouTuber out there is a pragmatist, huh? I gotta represent, make this philosophy look sexy as hell. But yo, enough of that. Let's just get into it. So James notices that human thought has changed over the years, obviously. But specifically, there are three stages that generally capture this evolution of human thought. We start out with common sense thinking, from way back when we were in the Flintstone ages. Then eventually science gets popular with people like Galileo and Bacon, and finally we end with the stage of criticism, where the sciences get criticized. Don't worry, we'll go over all three of these stages. But fair warning, things might get technical and complicated, and James himself admits that this might not be easy to convey like this. I'm dealing here with highly technical matters, hardly suitable for popular lecturing, and in which my own competence is small. So great, thanks James, thanks for the reassurance that we can get through this material. So let's start with common sense, the first stage. Here's how James defines it. Our fundamental ways of thinking about things are discoveries of exceedingly remote ancestors, which have been able to preserve themselves throughout the experience of all subsequent time. So let's visualize this. Oh look, that blob represents all the things you believe to be true. If you look closely, you might be able to spot some of those beliefs. But look there, that's a new experience. Now that experience has to mesh into your blob of beliefs. Maybe it fits in well, but maybe it contradicts one of your beliefs, meaning this new experience might kill that old belief. Now James is saying that common sense is essentially those beliefs that have survived the test of time and were passed down by ancestors. It sounds very evolutionary, very survival focused. But James uses an example that is pretty contemporary. He talks about the topic that everyone talks about when they've run out of things to talk about on a first date, the weather. Way back then, you kind of just took the weather as it came, never really knowing what you were going to get. But despite this ignorance, you could still practically react to the weather. If it's been raining all day, it probably, but not certainly, will keep raining. It's stuff like that, that gut feeling that can't really be intellectualized that makes up common sense, that intuition. Science, on the other hand, is breaking down the weather scientifically and explaining it, predicting it, and intellectualizing it, for lack of a better word. And now we live in a world with the Weather Channel, which no one watches, okay, don't lie. But we can also forecast the weather in the future. But this scientific way of thinking loses track of that intuition and feeling. James uses another example of looking at a map. You ever get lost somewhere and you open up the GPS only to find that you were way off from where you thought you were? The feeling that you are where you are is in the realm of common sense, while the scientific explanation is unsurprisingly in the realm of science. Now with those last examples, you might think that common sense is inferior to science, but it does have some upsides. Common sense appears thus as a perfectly definite stage in our understanding of things. A stage that satisfies in an extraordinarily successful way the purposes for which we think. When your belief in something is the result of common sense, it could be weak, but it could also be very strong. Like object permanence, right? That's a form of common sense that the object will still exist even if we turn our heads away from it. It's something so powerful and so solid that we don't even question it. The scientific explanation for object permanence isn't even necessary. Who gives a sh there's practicality in common sense too. 
Like although we look at our weather app and get all the info we need, do us everyday people really understand how the weather works? Okay, okay, maybe you were smart and paid attention in your high school science classes. I was kind of distracted trying to get a date to prom. But practically speaking, it doesn't matter whether or not you know how the weather works. We're both bringing an umbrella to go outside at the end of the day. It suffices for all the necessary practical ends of life. Alright, now it might sound like I'm on team common sense. But no, I'm not really on any team, besides the commanders. James sees value in all these stages even if they aren't 100% equal to one another. They each have their own merit. And I mean, I don't think I gotta go over the importance of science. I mean, the fact that you're viewing me right now is an achievement of science. Common sense can only get us so far, but science can get us farther. The common sense categories, one and all, cease to represent anything in the way of being. They are but sublime tricks of human thought are ways of escaping bewilderment in the midst of sensation's irremediable flow. Okay, so we know what common sense is, and we know what science is, but what is this third stage, the stage of criticism? Well, James doesn't go too much into it, but one can infer that he's talking about that realm of knowledge solely focused on critiquing ideas. Now, this is the part where James is going to take a machine gun to certain philosophers out there, and I'm sorry if a favorite of yours is up here, but here's the quote. The philosophic stage of criticism, much more thorough in its negations than the scientific stage, so far gives us no new range of practical power. Locke, Hume, Berkeley, Kant, Hegel have all been utterly sterile so far as shedding any light on the details of nature goes, and I can think of no invention or discovery that can be directly traced to anything in their peculiar thought. Alright, the obvious objection is that these philosophers have contributed things of practical power, the easiest example being Kant's ethics. But maybe James is talking about their metaphysics, which is out of the range of my expertise, so comment below if you know more. Now, critique does help us notice what's wrong, but it doesn't by that same action tell us what's right. And that seems to be the problem. It's like all those YouTube channels that just critique others. Sure, you might be right, but what valuable practical solutions are you going to give to people besides don't be like this or don't do this? Alright, and again, James is not playing favorites with any of these stages of thought. He sees merit in all of them. There are thus at least three well-characterized levels, stages, or types of thought about the world we live in, and the notions of one stage having one kind of merit, those of another stage another kind. So that is James's pragmatic explanation for common sense, and the other stages of human thought. See, it wasn't so bad. We got through it together. Give yourself a pat on the back, maybe some rocket pops, and hey, there's only three more lectures for James's pragmatism series. Thanks for being with me on this journey. Hopefully it's making pragmatism into at least a more interesting philosophy than you've expected. And all the attractive people are really into it, so you know, it's a fun group. If you enjoyed this video and want to support the channel, then subscribe, like, and hit the bell. And comment below your thoughts. And with that, I wish you all a beautiful rest of your day.